Hi there. Welcome to part two of our look at the new workflows module in FreezerWorks 2017. Before users can process workflows, you must configure workflow templates so that they can use. To begin, open configuration, configure workflows. Now this opens a list view of existing workflow templates. If you need to modify a template rather than create a new one, double click to open it and then follow along with the rest of this video. Otherwise, let's click add new and get started. Now before configuring the actual tasks in the workflow, you will need to fill out this preliminary information. Give your template a name. Let's go with uh, workflow help. And then we'll select the workflow type. Is this a check-in, check-out, or process shipment workflow? We'll start with a check-out. The set aliquot status dropdown determines the new aliquot status of each aliquot that you process this workflow on. For more info about aliquot status, see part one of this series. Now we'll just select checked out since this is a checkout workflow. This is all the information necessary to continue configuring the template and eventually save it. But we'll quickly discuss the other options too. The Assign Aliquot Custody dropdown determines the custodian for each aliquot that this workflow is run on. This dropdown gets filled with each people record in your database that was marked as a custodian. Again, see part one if you want more information. Finally, the Require Run Name checkbox, when selected, will force users to provide a name whenever they process this workflow. This name will end up on the View Workflow History record for the particular run of the workflow. This is useful if many of your users are processing the same workflows. Take note that even if you do not select this box, users can always optionally provide a workflow run name when processing. Click Continue Configuring Workflow to begin setting up the various workflow tasks. Now there are eight configurable tasks available with every workflow. The page buttons along the left side correspond to these tasks and will help you navigate through configuration. Assigned to groups, though not a task, is still very important. Now the first task page that appears is Update Fields. The list box here will eventually display all the fields you select to update in this workflow. To begin adding these fields, click Add Field. In the left box are all the non-unique aliquot fields in your database. To add one to the workflow, simply double click it. This will open a small entry form. The entry area at the top will vary depending on the type of field you selected. Date fields for a date field, choice list for a choice list field, etc. The bottom area will be the same for every field. This area includes three checkboxes. Let's discuss them now. The entry required box will force users to make a change to this field prior to processing the workflow. So fields that need to be updated whenever this workflow is run should have this box checked. Take special note of the modifiable during processing checkbox as you will see it frequently during the workflow configuration. In this case, it means the user processing the workflow has the ability to modify this field's data. This is necessary if you selected entry required and will not be entering data here. The clear value checkbox will simply clear the field's value when the workflow processes. For our field aliquot date, let's check entry required and modifiable during processing, so the user processing must fill in this data. Let's go through and add some more fields. Once all your fields are added, click Done to return to the Update Fields page. As you can see, all the fields we selected are in the list box with their corresponding attributes displayed. Now, the Create Transaction page is where you can configure a transaction that will be created for every aliquot that this workflow is run on. Check on Create Transaction to activate the fields below. 
only the transaction activity and transaction notes fields will be available. Transaction time, date, and tech name will be automatically filled in from the workflow information. If you want to force users to include transaction notes before they process the workflow, check on notes required. The modifiable during processing box is here as well. Check it on if you want users to be able to modify these fields. Take note that this will not allow them to check off create transaction. The create shipping box page is mostly for process shipment workflows and we have a checkout workflow, but we'll take a quick look at it now anyways. Check on create shipping box for printing if you want a shipping box picture created and printed after this workflow is processed. Once it is checked on, you can either highlight an existing format to select it, or click create format to make a new one. If you would like to modify an existing shipping box, just give it a double click. Now, if you want your processing users to be able to choose a different shipping box format, check on modifiable during processing. The Select Export slash Reports page is where you can choose export formats to save and reports to print after this workflow is processed. To turn on either of these options, simply check the corresponding box. To select exports or reports, check the boxes next to the desired formats. Again, if you would like users processing this workflow to be able to modify either of these sets of selections, check on the corresponding selections modifiable during processing box. We'll leave reports modifiable, but not exports. The print labels page is where you can select a label format to print for each aliqua in the workflow after it is processed. Check on print labels to activate the fields like usual. If you want users to be able to modify these fields when processing the workflow, check on label format settings modifiable during processing. Again, they will not be able to check off print labels. Note that the printer dropdown will always be modifiable during processing as this can change quite often. The set freezer position page will vary depending on the type of workflow you select. Checkout and process shipment workflows have these three options. Keep the complete freezer position, remove from freezer but keep position of aliquot within plate slash box, and clear freezer position entirely. On the other hand, check-in workflows have four options and include the freezer assignment fields to use when selecting anything other than no change to freezer position. You'll want to use the check-in freezer position settings in tandem with checkout and process shipment. For more information about these tools, watch our workflows set freezer position video. Remember that if you want users to be able to modify this page when processing, Check on freezer position settings modifiable during processing. The create email page will only be available if you are using FreezerWorks client server and have properly configured emails and system properties. Check on create email to activate the tools below. You can add as many emails as you like to a workflow. Click add to get started. The add email form should look familiar to you if you've used email tools before. Take note of a couple things however. When adding recipients, you can add FreezerWorks users, external contacts that have emails in their people record, and entire FreezerWorks groups. The other note I want to make is that the Add Variables buttons can be used in either the subject line or the message box. Again, if you want people processing this workflow to be able to add, remove, and edit any email templates, check on Modifiable during processing. The last task you can configure is on the QC Reconciliation page, and it is simpler than all the others. 
If you want to require users to perform a QC check on the aliquots before they can process the workflow, check on Require QC Check to Reconcile. You can also select a field for users to reconcile the aliquots with, but they will be able to select a different unique field as well. If you do not turn on Require QC Check to Reconcile, this page will be called List of Aliquots instead during processing, and simply display the aliquots you have selected in a list view. Now finally, to give users access to this workflow template for processing, you will need to assign it to their groups on the Assigned Groups page. Highlight and click Append, or double click the groups that you want to allow. When finished, click Save and New, and the workflow will be ready to process. That concludes this much longer discussion on configuring workflows. Join us in the next workflows video, where we will process this template we've created today. Thank you, and see you next time.